Hello and welcome back to the radio room. We're going to be taking a look at a Drake 2C receiver today. Um, got this, yeah, I think about four years ago, four or five years ago. Oh, maybe it's been longer than that, but uh, it's mostly been sitting on a shelf. I did did play with it a little bit a few couple years back, three or four years back maybe, um, just to, to see if it worked. Um, when I did do that, it it came on. Um, didn't have really an antenna hooked up to it. I think I had a screwdriver or paper clip stuck in the back of it. Just seeing if it would at least come to life. Um, but I really want to get this receiver working um, and be usable. Um, it's a little dirty. Uh, got a little dust on it from sitting on a shelf. Uh, it's got a little bit of cleaning to do on the inside. But uh, I like this receiver. Looks of it. I haven't, like I said, I haven't really used it. Um, but it's it's definitely a a nice looking receiver to me. Well, just a little bit of a little bit about this radio. Um, the Drake 2C was re was produced uh, between 1966 to 1974. About um, did do single sideband CW AM. Um, you could also do RTTY with it. Um, it does have selectivity, which you can, uh, you know, pick different selectable pass bands: 0.4 kilohertz, 2.4, and 4.8 kilohertz. It does have a AVC um, circuit in it to kind of help keep your, uh, you know, strong signals from overpowering it. Um, but still automatically come down to, to pick up more sensitive ones. It does have uh, about 1.8 out watts output on the audio, so it's not a lot on the uh, the speaker output, but uh, and, you know it's enough to do the job. Of course, it does have uh, headphones jack on it. Um, the antenna input, according to the specifications, is, is 52 ohms. Of I've, I've also read that it's anywhere between 52 and 75. Usually works out pretty well. And it's about 13 and a half pounds, and we'll take a look a little closer look at it. Of course, you can see the uh, the front of it right here. Um, we got to do have our function switch, which is you know got the off, standby, on, um, external mute, noise blanker, and calibrate. Um, off obviously is off, standby um, basically keeps everything warmed up, ready to go, um, but it's not actually on. The filaments are are heated. Um, it's ready to go as soon as you turn it to the on position. Of course, external mute. This radio could also be used in conjunction with a transmitter and have interlinks between it that would mute this radio when uh, when you're transmitting. Uh, that way you're not <laughs> blowing yourself out of your own chair. Um, and an optional noise blanker that you could put into it and an optional uh, 100 kilohertz um, oscillator that you could add to it, which this unit does have in it. It doesn't have the noise blanker. Um, it also doesn't have the 2CQ um, speaker, which also had some filtering in it um, to help uh, help with receive. I don't have the 2CQ uh, uh, speaker that goes along with it. Um, you got your pre-selector to pre-select uh, what bands you're doing. This basically uh, increases the sensitivity um, depending on what frequency you're listening to. Um, it does have five band selections, 3.57 megahertz, uh, 14 megahertz, 21 megahertz, and 28.5 megahertz. Um, you do have an RF gain. And that now it feels like it might have just a little bit of a hiccup in it. Um, but uh, part of the what we're doing to do here is, is clean this radio up. Um, I, uh, AF gain, obviously volume. Um, AM, lower sideband, upper sideband, um, and CW should be on the other side over there. No, oh, it actually doesn't say CW, so you, you just you have, to have to use upper sideband or lower sideband for your CW. And ABC is off, slow, and fast. Um, I think y'all can tell in the camera that there's actually where it says lower sideband and upper sideband, there's a white and a red. A white and a red. Because of the way this receiver works and combines with the uh, the local oscillator and the IF in it 
Um, this kind of goes back to, and I'm, I'm not going to get all the way into this, but this kind of goes back to the way this radio works is one reason why we have some of our, uh, some frequencies are lower sideband and others are upper sideband. You'll notice the 3.5 here is in red. So if I were to be in the red USB, that would be USB for 3.5 megahertz. So if I really wanted to use 3.5 megahertz, I would want to come over to the red LSB. And it's inverted because of the way the frequencies mix together. You're using the uh, the best way to explain this. Um, the way the, the signals mix together and the way the VFO works. The it's using a set frequency range in the VFO in order to mix with the incoming signals in order to produce the frequency that you want to, to, to hear. So I think, uh, if I remember correctly, the VFO here, you're basically inside the here on and, you know the local oscillator in the IF. Um, you're tuning, I think it's 3.5 to 4 megahertz. I'd have to look up the specification for this radio, but I think that's what it is. So you just go get like 500 kilohertz um, spread on that. What happens is is that the way that mixes is either adds or subtracts. And when down here, they're probably using um, the lower half of that. When you go up to here, it's using the mixing and the addition for it. So it kind of changes which sideband you're going to have whether you're adding or subtracting frequencies to the incoming signal. That all happens in the IF and the uh, uh, local oscillator and the incoming signal all mixing together. But I'm not going to get into that too much. Um, so that's most of the controls here. Right here you do have a, if you, if you can notice the needle moving there, that was just so you could zero your needle. And then of course you got a, an S meter over here. Um, on the side, this radio did have, like I said, uh, earphone jack so you can listen privately. Um, this switch right here is auxiliary and normal. Um, you could either be an auxiliary and you'd be using this auxiliary crystal. Or you could be in normal and it uses the crystals um, and crystal oscillators that are in the radio, um, but this this you could add a uh, another crystal for um, a different band or frequency range that it doesn't have. So maybe you want to do general coverage, um, say eight megahertz. Uh, you get the right crystal, you can put it in there. You go to there. Now you have an auxiliary. You know you can do some general coverage, but it depends on what crystal you have in there. This radio has, I believe, five tubes in it. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Well, there's supposed to be five. Oh, I think it's right underneath there. Yep, there's one that's hiding in a can for shielding. Let me show you that. This right here is the 100 kilohertz oscillator. It's uh, optional equipment for this. Um, it's called the 2AC. And right there, you do have where it says uh, RL Drake Company model 2AC 100 kilohertz calibrator. So this would put a calibrator, a, cali a tone every 100 kilohertz on your, as you're tuning if you have it in calibrate and it, it helps to make sure that you know it helps to calibrate the machine if you're, you're calibrating stuff it also helps you calibrate your dial um, we do have a fuse of course there's the main power transformer we do have an S meter zero so you could zero your meter um, this is where the external uh, 2CQ um, which is a, Q, a, Q5, a Q multiplier and has some filtering in it and then a, a slot right here 
or socket right here that you would put the uh, noise blanker on if you had that. Um, this radio is a little dusty on the inside. It's going to get cleaned up. There's a little bit of rust on the inside. Um, I'm not going to get too wild about trying to get the rust out of there. I'm probably going to, you know, brush the the chassis down a little bit uh, with a, a paintbrush. Uh, maybe get in there with a toothbrush or something, kind of knock dirt loose. Um, but I don't want to. I don't really want to take too much of that off. I don't really have anything to coat that, and I don't really feel like completely disassembling the radio just to get out underneath everything. Um, and as far as some of the rust, it's just the, the coating that they put on this has come off in spots or gotten thin, and it kind of rusted a little bit. Um, where I'm at, we don't have a lot of high humidity and stuff, so I'll probably leave that. Rust does form somewhat of a, uh, a protective coating in and of itself take rust off and you don't put something else on it's just going to rust again but other than that it looks pretty good um, we're going to get in here I'm going to take these cases off and we'll take a closer look at the inside of the radio so let me pause while I get these covers off real quick it's it's a real simple um, operation um, there's two screws on either side and the top half comes off right about right here you can see that little line there's actually two cases. There's a top piece and a bottom piece, and then two screws on either side right here, and the bottom comes off. So I'm going to pause a moment. I want to get the tops off. We'll take a closer look on the inside of it. Okay, and as you can see here, we've got the uh, we've got the covers removed. Um, kind of take a look at the inside of the the radio here. The receiver. Um, it's not in too bad a shape, a little dusty in spots. We'll get that cleaned up. Um, probably pull the tubes out and clean the sockets up a bit. Uh, we'll wipe everything down obviously real good. Got a little bit of rust right here. Might uh, see if we can't fix something on that. And. Uh, just clean it up real good, make sure everything's working good. Um, probably go through the manual and see if we can do a bit of an alignment on it or check see if it even needs an alignment on it. I'll give you a different view of the radio here. And of course we'll do some some work on the inside as well. Um, one thing I am going to do is I'm going to do a what's called a recap on this. Um, I was taking a look at this while well, after I got the top off, especially the bottom off. It's kind of comparing the, looking at the circuitry and stuff. You know, we got, you know, power supply kind of right in here, and that's where a lot of the, uh, the recapping is going to take place. Is kind of in this portion of the radio. Um, but I was looking at my schematic. Let me uh, get this down here. See if we can do this from a different viewpoint. I pulled a schematic out and the key here is I was looking at the schematic and not really seeing you know, let me turn it around here so it's the right way this, things didn't look right I was finding capacitors um, that might need to be changed some electrical leaks in there and right in here I was I was seeing something that didn't quite add up um, we have this thousand microfarad capacitor right here and if you look in the radio itself it needs some more light let me find my little flashlight see if this is going to work but down in here is where Okay, so here's a thousand microfarad capacitor. Let me get the light in there a little bit better. And then if you look right behind it, right there, there's another one. There's two of them right here together. And I didn't see that on the schematic. So I dug around a little bit and found another schematic for this radio. 
this one right here and it does have a second 1000 microfarad capacitor so I'm thinking there's a uh, there's different versions of this radio um, so I'm gonna have to look over this schematic this one seems like it might be a little better maybe a little closer to this actual unit um, there could have been changes in production during the uh, the production of it uh, maybe an earlier one didn't have as much filtering right there um, that's filtering the the 12 volt line it looks like uh, 12 volt power it's not the filament voltage uh, filament supply it looks like it's uh, it's going to the uh, audio amplifier section so that's supplying power to the the audio amplifier it looks like um, we do have yeah it's already rectified back here looks like so yeah got two rectifiers diodes right there so that's the the power for the audio amplifier section looks like fil just filtering capacitors and then there'll, there'll also be another a can type that's right here this actually has three capacitors inside of it and on the bottom side it goes through there um, I believe it's actually soldered with a tab on the bottom so that's going to take some work that's a lot of metal right there I'll probably have to use the big soldering iron to get it out of there I have to undo the line the the wires to it um, there should be three um, let me see here just looking at the uh, what they got written on here um, 60 40 and 20 microfarad at looks like 150 working volts so those should be probably on the high voltage power supply side there's a 20 the 50 and I'm seeing a 10 here C45 let me look at the parts list oh it just it just lists it as a uh, as a combination one but it actually listed as a 50 20 and 10 whereas the can in here is I gotta get the light right 60 40 and 20 hmm so I'll have to make sure I get one that matches that or make sure the the one I'm going to put in there is right I want to replace that just with a regular another can type so it looks you know original on the top here um, which you can find and then some of the other capacitors I need to go through and find the ones that need to be replaced and uh, we'll get those in but before we do that um, I just want to see if this thing is going to uh, work and give you another reason why it just went back up onto the shelf like I said it did turn on last time turn this thing around here a little bit and I'll get you all a different view um, I do have a speaker I'm going to use um, this should be a 4 ohm speaker if I remember correctly which this wants four ohms. Get y'all a different view here. Um, it does have an RCA output for the audio on the back, which is right here. That's the speaker. You got side tone and your mute. Like I said, this can be connected to a, a transceiver, a transmitter. Um, the 4NT, I believe, Drake 4NT was the companion that would go with this. Um, so it would be able to, by controls on the transmitter, you could mute this. Or you could also get side tone out of the transmitter, so you could zero beat yourself. And there's the speaker, and the antenna connector is right there. Um, 
um, it looks like it's seen slightly better days. Um, but we'll uh, we'll see if we need to do anything with that. I'm not sure if I, I can find a direct replacement for that. Um, I do want to make sure that I'm, of course, I'm going to have to have an adapter. I'm going to hook this up to my antenna system. So I kind of made myself up an adapter here. We got an RCA. <laughs> it's going to uh, an F connector because I had some coax laying around. This is the only adapter I have that would go from some sort of RF to, to RCA. And then I've uh, soldered a SO239 socket onto the end of that so I can actually plug it into uh, my antenna system. So give me just a few mo a moment. I'm going to get this uh, plugged in, uh, get the speaker hooked up, and get the antenna system hooked up. We'll turn this thing on and see if it does anything. Um, like I said, it's been a couple of years, so um, we'll see if it does anything. Do have a fuse here? Half watt fuse is in place. So if anything does go wrong in this radio, um, I don't have a dim bulb tester. I really need to build me one of those for working on some of these older radios. Um, it's got a half watt fuse in there, and it's on the line. So hopefully if anything goes wrong, it's going to cut the power before either the power transformer or something else goes wrong. But last time I turned it on, we didn't have anything go wrong. It just wasn't playing right and needed some more work. So give me just a moment and then I'll, uh, I'll get this all set up and we'll, we'll plug it in and, and test it out. Okay, and we're back. I've got the, uh, the radios plugged in. Got an antenna hooked up to it right here. And we do have a speaker hooked up to it. Um, and let's see what uh, what it wants to do, if anything. I'm going to go to on. This is just standby. Looks like we have dial lights. Got stuff warming up, looks like. light on audio. Looks like the RF gain control does, does something. Okay, so let's go to 20. We got our pre-selector about in 20. hear anything let me oh, upper, go to upper side band for that mode not really hearing anything looks like all the tubes Filaments at least are working. I have some dirty crystals. Hoping the crystals are still in good shape. The uh, band pass filter seems like they work. The game seems to work. ABC seems like it does something. I'm at full volume here.
Doesn't seem like it's picking anything up. Let's try a. Let's try 21. Megahertz. Could be just some things dirty in here. You just gotta get it cleaned up, and it might work better. Either that or our antenna ain't working really well. Let me uh, find something new to do this with. Kind of wondering if we're not making contact. In our antenna. I get no scratchy when I'm, when I'm doing this. As I'm normally, you get some scratchy doing this. It's almost like our antenna is not not hooked up. Making good contact. I'm gonna have to clean that RCA jack up. Maybe just a little bit. Oscillator. So I think we got some issues. All the tubes are warmed up. I am pleased to see that the the backlights work, the pilot lamps. I think it, uh, it's just going to need some, some TLC. Huh, I seem to have lost everything now.
And it seems like it's wanting to come to life, or it's got a lot of noise on the inside. I think what we need to do is do a, a clean up on it. Replace some caps. Definitely doesn't have very much audio output. Definitely got some dirty switches. So, we got some work cut out for us. Um, I think a good cleanup, get all the uh, switches and potentiometers um, cleaned up. I'll put some deoxid on them, get them to clean up a little bit. And uh, see if I can't do a capacitor change out on it. Um, and see if it works better, and then see if we can kind of do an alignment to it. So. That just kind of brings us through uh, an introduction to this. We got some work ahead of us. Hopefully, we'll get it working all right, and if, or see what the problem is. Um, and a lot of it might have to do with the fact it hasn't ran, it hasn't been used in quite a while. Dirty, the caps, stuff like that. Um, a lot of the caps, I, I was looking at. I don't know if I'm going to really be able to do them on camera. It's going to be, it's kind of some deep in work. Um, get you the right view here. Um, the can capacitors, I'm going to get down in here. So I'm going to be blocking the view there. I'm probably going to have to pull this board out gently. To get these caps redone. See, I'm almost kind of wondering because that one right there almost actually kind of feels warm. Um, so it might be leaky. Possibly. I think that's a little warmer than it probably should be. So that could be part of our problem. Especially if it's dragging down the voltage to the 12 volts, I believe, is where that one was going to. So that could be a problem there. You're dropping the voltage down for one that's going to lower the voltage some. But, uh, yeah. Let me get to work on this, and uh, I'll be back with some updates on it. It's going to be kind of crowded in there. Um, I think it's going to be awkward to try and get this on camera getting this out of here but uh, once I go through and, and change some stuff I'll show you what I what I did and, and explain how I did it and stuff like that and then hopefully uh, hopefully it'll work a little bit better once it gets recapped and cleaned up and hopefully we can do the alignment on it and see if we can't pick up its receive and I'll double check to make sure we're we're getting good contact into this antenna connector here um, I'm kind of wondering, it, as low as the volume was, as low as everything was, I don't know if we're getting a, I, I, I don't know if the antenna was literally connecting to the circuit or not. But I'll check that out here and, uh, and get back with y'all on that. So, like I said, um, there's the Drake 2C, and we're going to see if we can't get it back to life. I'm really looking forward to, to using this and, and using it as a receiver. So, bye for now.